Welcome in our 49ers insider Matt Mayoko, who's at Levi Stadium. And, and Mayoko, I want to start with the Seattle offense. This is a powerful offense. It's well documented throughout the entire season. Only one loss on the season for the Seahawks. This was a game where the 49ers defense had an opportunity to show what they were capable of against a high powered offense. But it was really a game that the Seahawks offense and their weapons shined. You know, the way this game started, the 49ers defense came out and they were flying around and it really put them in a good position. But the offense just didn't you know, enable this team to, to gather any kind of momentum. So that really hurt the 49ers. And then as we saw this game, basically, you know, from the middle of the first quarter, late in the first quarter on, is that Seattle Seahawks have some star players, Russell Wilson, DK Metcalf, Bobby Wagner, those guys played like superstars. The 49ers guys, the guys that the team expects to play at a high level, guys like Jimmy Garoppolo, George Kittle, and guys on the defensive side, they simply did not produce like the Seahawks stars did. So a lot of it on for Kittle was the fact that Garoppolo was off. He couldn't find him. They couldn't get that offense going. Seattle brought a lot of blitzes. They pressured him. Garoppolo wasn't decisive, didn't get the ball out to the right people. So this is really a case where in these types of big games, you expect your big time players to really step up and lead the way. And the Seahawks players did that. The 49ers players did not. Yeah, it's a very short week for the 49ers. They have the Packers coming to town for Thursday night football, just four days to prepare for that game. The big thing that I'm thinking about is the injuries that continue to pile up, and now you're backed up against a wall with a short week. How are the 49ers going to be able to handle the injuries and the short timeline? Yeah, remember last year, the 49ers were really able to beat the Green Bay Pack Packers with their running game, you know, especially in the playoffs with Raheem Mostert. But now, 49ers considerably, you know, they won't have Mostert. They won't have Jeff Wilson. Tevin Coleman goes out of this game early with a knee injury. So it ended up being just Jamichael Hasty and Jarek McKinnon. And so the 49ers running game right now is definitely a reason for concern. And then you also have Garoppolo leaving the game with an ankle injury. Nick Mullins comes in, gives the 49ers a little bit of momentum. So there's some question there. And then also when we see George Kittle leave the playing field in the fourth quarter with a foot injury, it, it really, you, you have to kind of consider what this week is going to be like. And probably, you know, the 49ers, as they start to prepare for the Packers, don't know exactly who they're going to have and who they're not going to have which I guess the way this season's going, that's par for the course. Yeah, that seems to be the case this season in 2020. Matt Mayoko, our 49ers insider, great insight as always. We're going to get back to some of what Matt Mayoko was just talking about with the Seahawks stars and their biggest star and Russell Wilson as we get a look at the quarterback comparison brought to you by Zenny. Jimmy Garoppolo looked out of whack. It's something you just talked about. Matt Mayoko just talked about uh, no touchdowns, an interception, uh, just only 84 yards. Nick Mullins comes in and tries to get a comeback going for the 49ers. But Russell Wilson, uh, just impressive as he is each and every week. 261 yards, uh, four touchdowns as we welcome Takeo Spikes back in here. Uh, Takeo, one of the main focuses for this defense was trying to stop Russell Wilson. That is a hard thing to do. Containing Russell Wilson, not something you're really able to do. And it was definitely not something that the 49ers defense uh, was able to hone in on today at Citry Link. Yeah, and I was very disappointed in that, especially with these guys going in at halftime. I want to say only down by seven. I thought they played well enough that first half to make a few minor adjustments. But Seattle came back out, made the adjustments, which the 49ers didn't on the defensive side. I truly thought they should have showed some type of two-man or showed some type of quarters coverage to make sure that they don't allow any explosive plays when it comes to DK Metcalf. And ultimately, the more plays that happen, the more yardage that they got, and then that eventually led to touchdowns. Yeah, and Jeff, Dante, when you think about Russell Wilson, I mean, this is an MVP candidate. So there's only so much that you can do when you're talking about a guy as talented as he is. But the 49ers did have a chance, and I like what Takiyo was hitting on there. They were down by six at the half, not able to get anything done with Jimmy Garoppolo. Nick Mullins tries to make the late effort. Yes, when you look at the Seattle Seahawks number one offense in the National Football League but it's really through Russell Wilson's arm and his legs it's not the running game that they possess they have talent on the outside hey with DK Metcalf and 
Tyler Lockett. These guys are explosive players. The way you slow that down is give your DBs some help. He's going to try to attack over the top. We know he throws the best deep ball in the National Football League. He's also going to attack underneath with crossing routes, hitting guys on the move. So what do you do? You play more zone, but you play two zone. You play four where if those guys are going to stay on the move, they're going to get their heads taken off. They have to sit down in zones. He's got to find the pass. You continue to try to contain Russell. That's a difficult thing to do. The Niners have struggled with that throughout the season, throughout the last two seasons of containing mobile quarterbacks. Once again, after those first couple series when the 49ers didn't take advantage from an offensive standpoint, and we knew going in, the best defense against Seattle is a ball control offense. 38 minutes of time possession keeps them off the field. They weren't able to do that today. They were not able to sustain drives. They were not able to capitalize. They had a chance coming out in the second half after adjustments, and they went three and out and gave Seattle the ball, who went right down the field and scored one more time. Russell Wilson is definitely the front runner for MVP. So you want to know how you make the game easy for him? You come out and you align a safety in the middle of the field and you align a safety down and then you let him look through his matchups pre-snap and then he's going to decide where he wants to throw the football. Do you know how many times the 49ers secondary did that today? Pretty much every time they played cover three or cover one. And that's when they burned them every time. DK Metcalf burned them every time. This team has three starting running backs out. The objective is not to stop this running back. The objective is to stop Tyler Lockett and DJ Metcalf. And the way that you do that is you play quarters, you play two-man, and you trap these guys. And you live with everything else that happens on the football field. You do not align and allow the MVP in the National Football League to read your mail before it's opened. And that's why they lost this game in the way that they did today. Yeah, and their backup, backup, backup running back, DJ D Dallas, finding the end zone today for Seattle. Let's flip gears and, and look at Jimmy Garoppolo. Garoppolo and his game today. He was injured. He gets replaced by Nick Mullins. But a lot of uh, pressure he faced today. The offensive line really seemed to regress. That was something that we've talked about the past two weeks against the Rams, against the Patriots, that they were able to protect Jimmy Garoppolo, give him a little bit more time. But look at this. 2.38 seconds is all that he had in the pocket to have time to throw the ball. That's not a lot of time for decision making. A lot of mistakes up front in protection. First of all, they played soft didn't have the edge like they did the last two weeks against the Rams and New England. They, revert, we, they went back to how they played against Philadelphia, where they got taken advantage of and got beat up in the front line of scrimmage. But secondary blitzes and Bobby Wagner killed them today. Like, who's looking out for those guys? And oftentimes, hey, whether it's the center and quarterback being on the same page to turn protection or the running back knowing who his responsibility is, one time the right guard and the running back both took up Bobby Wagner. Here comes a secondary defender right through an open A-gap hole and gets to Jimmy. Those type of breakdowns in week eight of the season should not be happening. That is mistake-prone football. That creates bad Assignment errors and situations for your quarterback never allows him to get comfortable. But then when he did have time, he didn't look comfortable. He's going through left side looks to right side, scanning the entire field. You got to break it down. You need to cut the field in half and you need to understand defensive secondary rotation and where that's going to take the football to you. Like what Russell Wilson does, Jimmy was not able to do that today. And you know why that happened? It was the element of surprise. Seattle the past couple weeks, they've been playing a lot of cover three, cover four coverage. Those linebackers were showing coverage, and on the snap, they were coming downhill with the direct blitzes. With Shanahan's offense and the way that he coaches quarterbacks, he's telling you to look for a certain coverage on a certain down and distance. And we talk about it all the time. When you play teams within a division, they understand your DNA. They understand what Garoppolo struggles at. And today he struggled with the element of surprise. Guys aligning in zone and hitting it on the snap. But you also have to look at what your pre-snap read is all about, right? When you have a stacked defender over a slot, so you have the slot defender over a slot receiver, but you're stacking a safety over the top, you you better be aware that that guy is coming off the edge and you better get the protection or notify your back or understand that I have a hot throw or a side adjustment throw. And if you're not aware of those type of things, you can get hit in the face, you can get knocked out of the game. Um, Flanagan Fowles had a hamstring, didn't return. Tevin Coleman, knee, didn't return. Dante Pettis, shoulder, didn't return. Garoppolo, angle, ankle, didn't return. Kittle, foot, didn't return. 
Um, and Fred Warner had a stinger, but did return. Go ahead. Kyle, the, the way the defense started this game, especially you know those first two series, you guys had an opportunity to really get some momentum. Um, that, that third down play on the first drive, the Wildcat, can you take us through that and, and why was that installed and, and why was that the time to call that play? Um, why is it, in, I mean, it's installed because it's a good play, just not versus zero. You know, they got us and they had all out blitz, um, like the call there when I made it, but hoping that we'd have two downs. I think it was third and seven or third and eight. We were out of field goal range. Um, thought that at least get us in the field goal range with the possibility of a second play. But uh, when you lose yards on it, then it was over. They didn't have a good look. Jed had no chance. He ended up zeroing us on it. Is, is there any early indication on, on the Kittle foot injury? Did, did the initial x-rays show any sort of fracture? And then also, um, oh, sorry. X-rays, sorry, go ahead, what'd you say? I was just gonna ask uh, Jordan Reed, did, did he seem like in practice uh, this, this past week, whether he might be able to play in the upcoming game? If, if yeah, Jordan Kittle, they didn't have, nothing was broken, at least on the x-rays. Um, so we got to check MRIs and stuff tomorrow um, and hoping for Jordan Reed this week, but, um, I'm not sure right now. Kyle, Kyle, it seemed like Jimmy was a little out of sorts. His accuracy was off from the get-go. And, and how much was that attributed to the ankle injury? And, and what's the status of, of that ankle now? Um, you can ask him on the ankle. Um, you know, I, I know it was hurt once we, I think we all saw, and he didn't go back in on that one play. But, you know, he had a good week of practice throwing it. And But, I mean, high ankle sprains linger, so you never know when it's going to affect you. But, um you know, I, I know he heard it later in the game or reheard it, and uh, we'll wait till tomorrow to see how bad it is. Uh, what's your level of confidence in this offense going forward without Debo Samuel? It seems like he's just irreplaceable for you guys, and it seems like it's hard to sort of scheme around what, what he provides. How, how do you do that going forward? Um, I mean, I've got a lot of confidence in our offense, no matter who's out there. I mean, you got to play well to have a good game, and uh, I don't think we played very well today, starting with me. Uh, made a few too many mistakes, got a little, got to go in there a little bit in the second or in the fourth quarter. But, um, you know, I didn't think we played good as a, as a group. And, and when you're missing a good player like Debo, always that's a struggle. But, you know, we've missed players a number of times and um, that's no reason to go out there and not play well. Kyle, how would you assess uh, Garoppolo's play when he was out there? Um, certainly had the interception early. Uh, was there some, you know, did you have some frustration in the way he played today? Um, yeah, I was frustrated with the whole offense, you know, starting with myself, you know, this wasn't a very good day for us. I uh, thought the defense came out, um, played pretty inspired those first couple drives and gave us a good chance to get up on them and we missed those opportunities. Um, you know, I thought the, you know, the, the third down call that didn't give us a chance for us all out. Um, you know, we needed to do a little bit better before that and would have loved to go for an on fourth down, but not after we lose it. Um, but it was both times the defense got us a chance and we didn't come out anything with it right when we get it around the 50 too. So. I was disappointed with the whole group. Um, you know, no one played great. Um, that always starts with me, but um, glad we got a game coming up soon so we can turn the page pretty quick and get ready for Green Bay. Kyle, obviously, if you try, I don't know whether they're trick or, or more creative plays and they don't work, then they're stupid plays. You, you talked about the uh, Wildcat. There's also, uh, I guess, kind of the throwback to Taylor and then the, the pitch to McKinnon. It looked like he was going to hand up to IU. To kind of salvage that play but when you say you didn't like it you know you didn't have your best game do you look at some of those plays or, or or different stuff i look at everything i mean every single play so it's i mean the screen it was a, it was a screen to trent taylor and you know we hit a bunch but the d lineman did a good job of getting through the whole line um i don't consider wildcat a tricky play i just consider it a power um or a handoff it's not very good versus all out so don't want to run any run there versus all out um, that's some stuff we've done a number of times on that third and long in that 40 yard area, trying to get two plays to go for it or kick a long field goal. But, um, no, I mean, you're trying to hit some big plays and we missed those opportunities early and didn't get much with the run game going, try to get it going. Uh, I think we committed to it pretty well in the first half, but, um, when you don't get any big plays in the run game, um, and then you make some of those mistakes, I mean, you guys saw what happened. So eventually we had to get away from it and start throwing it. Kyle, Jimmy Ward was obviously very frustrated after that hit. I'm sure you're probably the same, have the same frustration. Is there any other way you could coach that where Russell looks like he's maybe going down, but then he looks like he might not be? 
no, I mean, you can just give them the first down, um, which happens a ton because guys are scared as can be to get those penalties. They're not trying to be cheap. Um, they're also not trying to get fined. You know, it's just it's a big point in the game. If they get a first down, it's pretty much over, and they're right there at the sticks, and he is very good at what he did, you know, waiting until the last second. And it's just a huge challenge that not just us, not just um, our team has, the whole NFL has that. It's, it's a tough play. I understand why we do it. Got to protect the quarterback and protect everyone, but um, – very tough for our guys. I thought they tried to do it and hold on as well as they can.